Hello, welcome back to WTSF, where I answer questions from Reddit slash Street Fighter with in-game examples. I find the common themes for the week on Reddit's questions, you vote for the things that you'd like to see most, and then I answer questions based on that theme. This week what you'd like to see most is how to learn and improve, and I don't normally show the top of my browser, but as you can see from all the tabs there, there were a lot of questions this time from people who just don't know how to learn. Even practice takes practice. First question, Psychorato wants to know a methodology to improve through replay analysis. I've recently been trying to up my Street Fighter game. I'm currently at gold rank and I've seen a lot of emphasis put on reviewing your own replays as a method to improve but I was wondering what was the best way to go about doing this? I mean do you play games until you lose and then stop to review it and do that every time or do you play a bunch of games and then review a bunch of losses at once? Thanks. So first things first it's not just about watching your losses it's also just as important to watch your wins and I'd also recommend watching other players in your rank with the same characters, just to see if there's anything that you're missing. One of the simplest things you can do in a replay where you win or lose is actually just look at a time where you've been knocked down and taken some damage and work out why it is that that happened. So we see this Mika gets knocked down here and has to block on wake up and we need to understand what put them in that scenario. So we can go back to this point where they actually got hit with a crouching medium punch, but at that point it's technically too late. You actually want to go almost two steps back to see what your actions were because you can't change their actions, you can only change yours. And what we see is that they did a Rainbow Typhoon, which has no Oki, and then they dashed after it and then tried to do something. And if you're the Chun-Li at that point, it's very easy for you to get knocked down, know that they have no reason to dash, and then react to that, which is exactly what happened. Now as the Mika, we can ask what could we have done to prevent that from happening. First thing is in that range, we could have actually done a Brimstone rather than a Rainbow Typhoon. The command throw that you can dash after, we're mid-screen, so there's no tactical advantage to doing the Typhoon over the Brimstone. So in this instance, there is a, a perfectly reasonable different option that we should always pick that would prevent us from having to go into that scenario. Say we did pick that move, we can also not dash there. We could walk forward and block there, because then we would have a minus 8 Chun-Li in our face, and there is nothing better as a grappler than having someone that minus that close. We can also hang back, that's a good amount of space, you can throw a microphone, maybe you want to make a note there, see if there's any safe jump opportunities. So already there, in one mistake, covering three seconds of play, we've managed to find about three different options that would improve our game. Likewise as the Chun-Li here, if we take a hit and get knocked down, we can go back a couple of steps to understand what happened there. And this is one you will see quite a lot in the gold ranks. They are close to stun, you have a gargantuan life lead, yet the Chun-Li chose to throw a projectile in quite a punishable range. Try to find opportunities where you're making high risk decisions that you don't necessarily have to make. Here, the Chun-Li could just stand under the timer and wait for that Mika to come out. Check the dashes, do some anti-airs, try to bait out that EX Peach in a slightly safer range, and then the punish is all yours. So there are some examples of both technical and strategic improvements that you can make by viewing your replays. So not just objectively what am I doing right or wrong, what can I do with my game plan to improve that as well. With each of these minor improvements that you make a note of, just try to implement one in your next match. If you want a bit more depth, there's a question here from Kyle Gibran asking for an actual replay analysis, so I'll make a separate video, I'll link that in the description, and I'll show you some more things about how to look at your video as a critic. Next question by KebzokX, what to prioritise in learning? Fairly new, I wanted to know in what order should I learn new things? For example, in Tekken, for me, it was simple combos from different starters, movement and punishment. In terms of Street Fighter V, I have no clue where to start. I joined the Ken Discord and got overloaded with information that I don't know what to do with. Any help? So one of the first things you want to learn with any character is going to be what are your anti -airs. So I've set Colleen here to walk backwards, walk forwards, do some pokes and do a jump in. And that encourages me to look for checking dashes with a normal, but also to look for jump ins and respond to them appropriately as well. And because there's a big crush counter button in there from Colleen, we're also going to get punished there if we're overactive. We want to find dash check buttons that recover quickly enough that we can still anti-air afterwards. We want fast meterless options first. Understand what you can do with meter as well though, of course. Next, find some good hit confirms in neutral. So we've got them set to random block. We want to find some good hit confirms in neutral. So we're buffering on block and on hit, we're finishing that off with the last button. Ideally, see if your character has anything that's more than a single hit confirm. The more time you've got to hit confirm something, the better. Next, find your fastest punish. So we've set Colleen to a minus four move and then we're going to try and find a punish with a four frame start. Practice these things at different ranges in corners and mid screen. 
that will be variation. Next try and find higher damage stuff to see you can punish things like blocked sweeps, blocked dragon punches. And again, start with meterless stuff before going into some of the more metered things. It just means that you're more prepared for more scenarios. That's it really, anti-air and ground control. And then basic punishment is enough for you to start practicing a lot of the fundamentals. And you can then apply things like the more impressive combos, situational things after you've already developed those skills. Next question from Blue Harpoon, is it wrong that I have a bad win-loss streak online? The important thing when it comes to fighting games is just that you're getting better. There were a lot of questions like that about is it bad that I can't get out of this rank? Is it bad that my win-loss ratio is not all that? Talked in the past on these videos about skill acquisition models. Shuhari is one that comes from karate and all sorts of other places. The concept that you have to first learn what the rules are follow the rules, understand what the exceptions to the rules are, and then through developing situational awareness and personal experience, eventually you can become the rules and create your own rules as well. This process, when applied to learning anything, means that the result is never the objective. Winning and losing a match doesn't matter if you're not applying things that you've learned from previous experience. So if you're missing that whiff punish all the time, and then you spend the next match just trying to hit that whiff punish, and you still lose that match, that's absolutely fine. You've got what you wanted out of that match. And then you can apply that with punishing technique to the rest of your game plan. So you're still maintaining a good sense of neutral. You're still doing the optimal punishes while also looking out for that with punish opportunity. And then you get into the ha and the re, the more exciting part of that. Where you go, okay, what are the matchup specific things that I can do here? What are the screen positional specific things that I can do here? What can I do with any amount of meter to get the most out of this situation? And that's how you develop those skills and that develops your strength with that character. No matter what your stats say, if you're getting things out of the time that you're playing, then you're winning. The skills you acquire doing things this way are much more sustainable than a rank in one game. The other thing with your win and loss streak, a lot of people jump into fighting games and go, oh well if I'm average then I'll have a 50-50 win loss ratio. That's just not true. When you first learn, everybody else that you're playing against knows more than you do and it's actually highly likely that you will lose more matches than you win until you've got to that base level of understanding that most seasoned fighting game players already have. Don't worry too much about losing a lot of games in a row. As long as you're picking things up and losing less and less very slowly over time, then you're making the right decisions. Next up from Kez Karma, I suck at Street Fighter 5 and I need help. So I've played fighting games for a short while, but I only recently got into the Street Fighter franchise. I've learned and practiced the core concepts and fundamentals, but it seems like I'm just trash at Street Fighter 5. My friend plays Kami and Ibuki and pretty much 10 owes me all the time, despite us getting into Street Fighter at the same time. I just have absolutely no idea when it's my turn. It's the worst against Kami. I feel as soon as I press a button, I get blown up for it. I play Ken and Laura if that helps, but I really need advice on how to not be dog shit at this game. For one thing to say, learn the matchup and learn what's punishable. But if you're trying all those things and not getting anywhere, another thing worth doing is actually trying to learn their character. We have this problem in my local where a fang tends to rule a lot of the roost. It's difficult to learn how to effectively punish a character if they're never going to actually let you get those opportunities. So you do have to learn them on a neutral level as well. So this means understanding that character. What kind of buttons do they really like to use? Why are they using them? What ranges are they trying to stand at? Where are they trying to activate? Once you've got that mindset, when you're playing against them, you now know what you can deny them. At this point, you're denying them their own game plan, which is what they've been doing to you so far. Watch some of their character tutorials. Most people doing a character tutorial are gonna be very clear about what's cheap with a certain character. What kind of things do you really want to avoid? Learn their biggest fears. Last question by Big Bustinator, what trials no longer apply? Is there a list somewhere of outdated trial combos that no longer work as of season five? Now, when you go into training mode, you get that warning of some of these aren't gonna apply anymore. It means mechanically that specific combo might not work anymore. Combos and trials aren't there to teach you actual functional combos. They're there to teach you certain mechanics. This one in particular is not telling you to do a hard kick into crouch and medium kick because that doesn't actually work. What it's teaching you is that there's a micro step that you can do. Regardless of what the trial is, just try to understand what it's trying to tell you. And it's not trying to tell you to do this combo. For real combos, unfortunately, you're going to have to go to some of the online discords, YouTube videos and things like that. Other resources outside of the game. Find out what's best for your character. And that's it for another week on WTSF. 
I think the general theme for this one is that you need to break your goals down into smaller increments if you want to succeed without smashing your head off a wall over and over again. I'll include a link to Mika's journal again, which has broken down a lot of improvement into very, very gradual steps over a very long period of time. A lot of it is unfortunately locals based, but hopefully you can apply the same things in your online weeklies. If you want to take part in the polls that inform these episodes, uh, please follow me at, at Behind the Wires or at the Hair FGC on Twitter. Also, I produce these videos live on Twitch. So if you want to learn more about the production side of these or a bit more in-depth knowledge as to how I get to the answers that I get to, follow me at The Wireman on Twitch. And as always, thanks to r slash Street Fighter. Post any questions you have about the game up on there. There is a lot of support out there for you. And I'll see you all next week for another one.